The other thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is just the challenges that we face taking those ideas and those stories and those things that we're working on and moving them forward so that they become something that now a fan of romance can actually read or watch or listen to. Our company has adapted over 20 novels, romance novels, into rom-com movies. Some of them have been holiday themed. Some of them have been just straight rom-com or romance. It's been a bit challenging sometimes to articulate like what, what our process is to find books, but let's talk a little bit about audience feedback and readership feedback. What does that how does that inform the decisions that you make, Molly, when you decide, when you sit down to write? That's a really interesting question because uh, sometimes you have a very vocal fan that's like, well, just keep doing this one thing that I really love. Like, you know, and, and, you, and, you, and you, you're pulled towards other stories. But I, I do think as someone, you know, I've, I have different pen names and I've written across several genres, is that I don't want to get too far away from the core story. It's always a romance, right? Whether how much it's on the page or, you know, closed door or, you know, just within the characters. I mean, like, romance is a part of every everything that I write. But the fans, fans are vocal. And if you write something really sexy, they want more sexy. <laughs> you know, like, so you, you kind of do run into that and you've got to be like, all right, well, yeah. I'm doing this right now and hopefully I'll get back to that. But, We'll see. Yeah, I think staying true to my own vision. I mean, I love my fans so much, and I'm really, really grateful of the time that they let me spend with them when they read my books. But I think I, I need to stay true to my own vision for what I'm trying to put out there. And a lot of it has to do with what the market wants at the time. Sometimes I'll get that, that message saying, oh, you have to do this, this, this. And I'll be like, I would love to, but nobody would buy it except for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Well, I, I think, Farah, that you bring up an incredible point about the marketplace and yeah. about commerce. And I think that that is something that is a big challenge for all of us with a creative spirit that are trying to tell stories and to move people who either read or, or, or watch our films. But at the end of the day, there's always this little gatekeeper that's there that is, in your case, a publisher and in our case, a network. Um, that decides sort of what the marketplace is demanding. And I will speak to the fact that we make a tremendous amount of Christmas movies. Um, we make movies very similar into the, the Hallmark vein. We've done lots with uh, Harlequin Publishing. We've done lots with original ideas. We've worked and adapted uh, published works that are sort of standalone from authors. And it's one of those things where you know, as a business owner, I worry, like, am I sometimes waited a little bit too much holiday? But if the market demands it, you keep doing it. And I will also say that in my heart, I, also, I completely love doing it. Speak to me a little bit, Molly, about managing your own brand. Even within the romance genre, you want to do subgenres. So there's pen names and there's other things. Is there any kind of insight that you can give at all to, to, why that happens or and whether yeah. it's easy or good or you're asking the person with three pen names I started writing as Molly O'Keefe and then as I started to write sexier more erotic novels they were M. O'Keefe and right. then I write women's fiction as Molly Fader right and I do I'm very lucky to have readers read across all of them I have some that only want the very specific things and I I, I honestly believe that it all comes down to respecting the story you want to tell the, the story you tell well and what the reader wants. So finding that really manageable middle ground. And I think you figure out what your core story is and you just lean in, right? Like I've got, I like a lot of angst in Molly O'Keefe and Molly Fader. People are very, they come from, they have big bad wounds in their psyches mm -hmm. and we've got to really work through this often through sex. <laughs> you know, like, so it's, you know, I just you just find that 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 vein that you like and just lean lean into that. Right. And the the branding is hard as writers, I think. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of impossible to get that far outside your head to think about, you know, the you know, how to market and yeah. pitch and position. Like that is it's real it's very hard. When we started to spend time with authors, I think what really blew us away was the entrepreneurship that each individual has to do because 
it feels as it's been explained to me that there you know there there is a aloneness almost to how you write and how you do things and and working sometimes in partnerships with the editors and and collaborating with other writers um, but then when it comes to actually then marketing it are you finding that you're getting enough support out there from <laughs> is there ever enough is there, yeah <laughs> I mean I think the, the fact of it of it is is in over your career as an author you might like I have three books here on the table each one is with a different publisher so right. that's three different marketing teams three different publicity teams right um, the only common denominator is me right so I need to sell myself right um, I need to sell myself so I can grab readers that will come with me from each one because I don't mm -hmm. want to just have the readers for that book and that book um, right. And to try and figure out that brand, like what is my brand, right. um, especially when I'm writing in two different age categories now, um, how, what's the common denominator other than me? Then I have to like have a, like an existential crisis. Well, what am I? <laughs> and, now, and now who's helping who's you with it? that? Is That's, it like your family so, helping with you, no, your editors, think, fellow authors? Like where's the biggest help coming from? I, don't th I think it has to come from your branding, has to yeah, come from you. you. It needs to be because... It's never going to sound, I, I know authors that say, well, I think I'm going to make my brand this, this, and this. And they pick things and they're like, that's their brand. These are the buzzwords. And then, words, yeah, and, I'm, yeah. and then it's not authentic. And right. they burn out. I went to a workshop on branding really early in my career. And the thing that I came out of it is like, don't even try. Right. <laughs> Just whatever you find, that, whenever you're being yourself on social media yeah. or in an interview, whenever you're being yourself, if that works out well for you, do that again. Right. You know, the weird thing about that, though, is that you start to get really in your head about that and like... Well, is this natural? Am I? It was, <laughs> is that real? Yeah, like, like, it's really <laughs> existential yeah, crisis. Yeah. Who am I, I? I will say that one of the things that's happened in the length of my career is, you know, the, I, you know, everybody's some super savvy marketer is ready to answer your questions and tell you what your brand is. If yeah. you know, that that's I can name who it would be. I think we're thinking of the same person. Or a fan, I'm sure. Yeah, will also. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chime in the Greek chorus, I'm sure. Yeah, lots yeah exactly. Of this is what you write. And I mean, it, it makes sense because if people, probably same thing for you in film, that if people are going to read Molly's book, that means they like romance and they're gonna, that, that helps everybody. So I, we, we support each other because every time one of us gets higher, that means romance gets higher. Yeah. Do you find that going to conferences is something that has been helpful in the past? Uh, so much. All of my critique partners, my agent, you know, people that I collaborate with um, now, I met them all at a conference. And I mean, it's funny coming in and out of, or coming out of COVID, um, you just like, the, you miss the conference. You're just inspired. You're inspired by other people. You're inspired by hearing their stories. You're inspired by seeing their success and commiserating about everybody, you know, what's going on. And that's something, I mean, again, this is something that is very similar for us in the film and television world, I have spent the time swanning about in the south of France generally at these television conferences. And But it is about those collisions, exactly. You're invited to a dinner, you get to sit with a network that you never thought you would get, you know, you've had you or your assistant or many people have tried to get you in with that that particular buyer and there you are yeah. right mm. beside them. And that's the one thing that we have found that is so important. I've just come off of a conference, but a Zoom conference just doesn't have the same no. feeling. It's better than nothing, honestly, the Zoom conference is at least a chance to see your your writing friends face to face. That feeling of the big conference, especially like the, the big RWA ones. And what we're trying to do uh, here at Love is, is we are looking at a conference where we want to bring authors together with film and television creators and buyers. I remember the first conference that I went to, like the first time you go see Nora Roberts speak, right? Yeah. And she's a, she's an amazing speaker, tells, tells a funny story, is completely authentic, swears like a trucker. And like, I remember going home and like repeating what she said to my parents verbatim. Like I was just so inspired yeah. and excited. And, yeah. and that only happens. In, has there been a keynote speaker at some point that's really touched you? Yeah, definitely Beverly Jenkins. Bev Jenkins is an amazing speaker. She actually spoke at the conference I was at this weekend as well. And it, it was an awesome presentation. But I think it's a lot of it is the, the little offhand meetings people in the like at the bar afterwards or chatting with the person next to you in such and such workshop or something. 
and those relationships, like I, I still keep in touch with people that I just randomly sat next to in a workshop. Yeah. And somebody's like, oh, how do you know them? I'm like, well, there was this and um, Sherry Thomas was speaking and <laughs> we, had, we had to sit on the floor because <laughs> everybody else was there. And I think that's just that, that kind of connection because you're like-minded people. We're all romance writers and we have that, that connection, but it's not often that we get to be with like hundreds, hundreds or thousands of others like us in one place. Yeah.